Good morning. That is from the on YouTube. You can watch the whole song if you want to. Uh, it's from that was recorded in Madison Square Garden in New York City. And there's two reasons why, three reasons I wanted to play that. One was that song is a very famous song and it really encapsulates um, what we're going to be speaking about today. Oh, good catch. Um, two is I went to school with some of the people that were actually in that band. And I can tell you, they're really ordinary people. <laughs> very normal people. I could tell you some pretty embarrassing stories. But we put them on a pedestal and think, oh, but they're at Madison. God did something through them that he couldn't do through me. And thirdly, and mainly, I wanted to play that because it kind of makes me laugh or just sort of smirk a little bit the way people uh, clap and cheer when that song comes on. And the reason is, if you were in a place where God was, and today's message is entitled, When God Calls You to Walk on Water, Building a Kingdom Vision. And if you are in a place where God is loading you in, in His kingdom, He's loading you in to shoot you out and to ask you to go and walk on water and build something for His kingdom and do something new for His kingdom, I don't think you would actually be cheering like the people at the audience in that song are cheering. I think you'd be kind of terrified and be kind of scared. And the words like Liberty Hill was talking the other day at Bible study, young adults, about reverence. These would be the things that would be going around. And I'm not obviously having a go at people for cheering for a good song, but I'm just saying that it's an interesting sort of dynamic for me when everyone starts cheering. And I want to ask you today, our lives are busy, I've got small children, they're in the service today, and there's, you know, bills and inflation and everything going on, and the busyness of running an active, vibrant church, and all of that. But in the midst of all of that, what has God called you to do? What is the existential, which means personal calling God has called, put on your life? What has He asked you to do this day, 21 of July, I think, from memory, 2024, in the Sutherland Shire, on Pil Pil Pilger Road, here in Shire Salvos, what has God asked you to do? What is the call on your life? And I just want to briefly say there's a difference between a kingdom call and just doing something kind of fun or exciting or whatever. A kingdom call is Mark 1, 15, where Jesus comes and says at the start of the Gospels, my kingdom is at hand, repent and believe the good news. And then in Matthew 24, we are called to build the kingdom of God, the Great Commission. It is all about building the glory of God into our culture, into our community. That is a kingdom vision. And from my life recently, just a little bit of a story to illustrate this. I don't know if you've ever been out to Penrith. I recently moved from Penrith, and there's the Nepean River there, which is a really nice uh, river track. And there's a cafe there called The Orchard. A lot of parents like to take their kids there. It's got a good playground. And about November last year, I was, had just walked around that river with a young man, some of you know, his name's Gabe Ortega, and his wife, Brianna, they used to, they were coming to our church, they were actually here two weeks ago, they came back because she's pregnant to see her family. And he, we walked around that track for the last time, it was kind of emotional for me, because I met him at Hillsong Conference many years earlier, I saw him down on the floor, and he was down there holding an usher's sign, and God just spoke to me and said, you got to help that kid. And I went down, I spoke to him, it's a long story obviously, and we ended up, he ended up coming and joining the church I was pastoring at the time, and he said, I've been called by God to plant a church in Seattle. And that was what God had told him. 
and we went on a very long journey. Uh, ministry at the time ended up funding his Bible college degree part of it and really putting everything we had behind him. And after many, many years, we're standing in the front of that orchard cafe. I was leaning on one of the wooden posts. You could see them if you really wanted to down there in the Pean River. And he said this to me, and I'll never forget it till the day I die. It was the last time I was going to see him. He was getting on a plane going. And he said to me, Sean, you know, when you hear the call of God, you just have to go. All that matters is saying yes. And, you know, I'm a little bit older now. I used to be like you, young and cool, but I'm not anymore. I'm getting a bit older. And when you get a bit older, it's always good to be sharpened by the young ones. And the, the, the innocence and the purity of his faith in that moment really inspired me. And I just want to encourage you, don't overthink this. If God's called you to walk on water... God's called you to build something for his kingdom. What is it? Name it in your mind now. Maybe there's three general categories. One, he's asked you to build something in our movement, in the Salvation Army. Maybe he's calling you to be an officer and everyone's saying, oh, no one does, really does that much anymore. But maybe he's asking you to do it. Would you say yes? Maybe he's calling you to step out in faith and join a ministry in our church that you aren't currently a part of what Joel was talking about before, or the worship team, or the greeting team, or whatever. Maybe he's calling you to do something that you're not currently doing. Would you say yes? Or maybe God's asked you, like using Gabe as an example, to do something just out of the box, so to speak. Would you say yes? Maybe God's calling you to add another one in to build a kingdom business that would fund the work of the Lord. We know we need them. Would you say yes? When God calls you to walk on water. Our first verse today in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6, it just has this phrase there, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Can I ask you today, have you stayed long enough in the place of thinking it through, of analysing it, of trying to make it all make sense. This is when God calls us to do something for his kingdom. It's a step of faith. There's a reason why we call it a step of faith, because you can't rationalize it. But we know in our heart that the Lord has called us, and we step out and we say yes to the Lord. Have you stayed long enough at this mountain? And there's a phrase there on the screen, when Christ comes and comes again, it's a, it's a famous statement from a, 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 a pastor from Scotland many years ago. And it, it's meant to really encapsulate a bit of a hidden message here that you probably wouldn't normally pick up if you, in the English Bible. Because the word Deuteronomy, it actually means the second repetition or the second giving of the law. And there's a number of different ideas there. But what's really interesting is that the verse that Dylan read for us that command to go out and to do, this is actually the first time it was given. And if you read on in the chapter, there's some really like haunting statements in that chapter because this command was issued to the generation that said no. We all know the famous story, the generation that said no. They disobeyed the Lord. And so God, at the end of the book of Deuteronomy and the start of, book of, start of the book of Joshua, has to reissue the command a second time to, I guess, the next generation, Generation Alpha, we just had on the screen, who eventually say yes. And it's really interesting there, because Joel putting those generations up, because in the second yes, in the second, where the second issuing of that command where the generation says yes, there's this beautiful image there, because there's two people that lead it. One is the young one, which is the Joshua, but then there's the, the builder, Caleb, who was the only person sort of left over from that older generation who, got to, who was faithful, who wanted to go in but had to go into the wilderness for 40 years. And it's really interesting because the journey they were commanded to take actually takes 11 days. But because of their disobedience, it took 40 years. And there's this haunting I call it haunting because I feel that way about it. Language in the rest of this chapter where this generation says no 
and then God reroutes them. You know in your GPS when you get rerouted? And it says, I now command you to go into the desert. And they're commanded to not go into the promised land anymore, but to go into the desert and to spend 40 years wandering. And then it says, the Lord says to Moses that the young ones who were innocent, who didn't know any better, this is scripture I'm quoting, they will eventually then get the command a second time and go. And I don't want to be all heavy and scary and all that kind of thing, but we have to preach the word, right? And the word's giving us a warning here. You don't want to get overwhelmed by the busyness of our life and accidentally miss the call on your life and have it get passed off to your, the next generation, Now, I love my daughter. She's currently eating something there and making a weird face. I love her, and the other one's down there. I love her, and I love her. But my love for her doesn't mean that I don't want to live my calling and have it end up on her shoulders, right? That she's got to go in. I want to provide in faith to build what God's called me to build in my family with my friends so that then there can be an expansion that they can come in and occupy. Amen? You know that game Minesweeper? Where you tap on it, and sometimes you tap, and a whole lot more opens up? I wonder if that's a picture for your life today, that God's calling you to something new. You have stayed at this mountain long enough. Just for a moment, we, we buzz on all the time, and we just go from thing to thing to thing. But I just want to pause, and I just want to quiet, and I just want to ask you, whatever it is for you, I cycled through some options there at the start, have you stayed long enough in a waiting phase? Is it time now to go? Is it time to act? And our next scripture is from the same verse, and it's the command of the Lord where he says, break camp and advance. And I believe in all my heart that this is a word for people, some people in this church this morning. It's time to break camp and advance. And I just want to repeat, what is it for you? I want to pause to repeat. Has he called you to serve in our greater movement? Has he called you to serve in a new way in our local church? Or is he calling you to do something that's a little bit out of the box? Like young Gabe, build a business, whatever. I believe that the Lord's giving a command to someone today to break camp and advance. And, and again, what's interesting in the text is there's two, there's two places mentioned in, this, in, this, in, this, in these verses. One is Horeb, which is the mountain they're at, and then the Euphra- Euphrates, which is one of the rivers of the promised land. And we all know that the promised land was called the land flowing with milk and honey. It was a beautiful land, kind of like the Shire. Beautiful, water, flowing, Right? But what is kind of hidden in the text there is that Horab, the mountain they're at, that that mountain in the Hebrew, it means dry place, waterless place. It means desert. And so God was actually calling the Israelites to move from this dry, waterless place into the promised land. And it's a beautiful textual call from the Word of God today for our lives to move out of this dry place into the promised land, into the land flowing with milk and honey, into this beautiful place. And I just, again, it's a bit of a different message today for me. I don't want to get it here and get excited and go on and on and on. I just want to let, elevate the Word of God and let the text speak to you. Is God calling you to move out of this dry, desert, Horab waterless place and into your promised land and it's the imagery here the geography if we had more time I'd break it all down but it's interesting because they could actually see the promised land it was on the other side of the river it was just like right there I don't know it's like if you you know live maybe on the other side of the bridge like I don't know Padstow and you could see the Shire or I don't know I'm new here I'm not sure if I know Trent lives in Padstow we love you brother you're welcome you're well we're inclusive here we're inclusive you know um but like I don't know what the what the image is there for you but it's just such an interesting picture 
And you know, on Instagram, you go on there. I'm not very good at how to use all this. But if you go on there, it gives you these, it gives you like this little thing there where you get messages. And it gives you this little thing where there's a green dot and it tells you if someone's online. I, have, I won't name the person, but someone is there, one of my, only one person online right now. Most of my friends are probably in church, right? Which is good, right? But they're online. They're available to chat on Instagram. And I was looking at that when I was preparing and I was just sort of thinking to myself, it's such an interesting thing, Instagram and social media, because I can go online and I can look at all these other people entering their promised land. And I can view all these other people killing it for the Lord and building the kingdom. But do you just want to be sitting there on the other side of Instagram watching someone else do it? That's not what God's called you to do. He hasn't called you to be a, a, a sit on the sidelines. He's called you to be on the field. And he wants you on the field. And he needs you on the field. And the kingdom of God, if you've never heard it, and it's never been said to you, or maybe you've forgotten it, you just need a reminder today. God needs you. He needs you on the field. Yes, God can do a theological work around and use anyone and all these complicated things. But at the end of the day, God uses his people. He has given you a talent. He has given you a purpose. And you have a calling on your life from the Word of God to build the kingdom of God. And your life is never going to be as fulfilled as it, as it could be to the fullest until you're walking in that calling to its fullest. And there's a couple of things here. One is complacency. Our society, I don't want to be all heavy, but it just leads to that, you know? Because we're comfortable. And the other one is, and it's kind of a difference a nuanced thing here with building the kingdom and a kingdom vision. We don't want to just add to all the noise that's already out there. There's already so much noise out there. But when you walk in the calling that God's got on your life, you're not adding to the noise. You're doing the unique thing that God's called you to do. See, I have given you this land from verse 8. And it reminds us that this is a gift of God. It's a gift of God. It says in the Word, not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. And I just want to make this point on this verse, that it is a gift. And if you've never heard it before, I want you to understand this, that our job is to receive. And you know, I'm not a very good surfer, but I have tried I had a McTavish longboard at one point. I don't know where it is, but it's in someone's shed up on the central coast. I left it there, you know. But one thing that struck me is if you want to surf right, the ocean's there, the water's there, the waves are there. It's all there. But you've got to go out and position yourself on the board to receive the wave as it comes in. And when we step out in faith, we're positioning ourselves in what God's set up for us so that we can receive what God's given us. And as we do that, I just want to give you a couple of points. In verse 8, it says, go in and take possession of the land. God is calling you today to go in and take possession of the land that he's called to give you, whatever that looks like for your life. And I want to just give you three quick pointers, three things from the Word of God that are very, very important if you would have the faith to step out of the boat, to step out of the ease of normal life and to go out and walk on the water. And the first is we must have inner holiness. And that doesn't come through trying. We just did a whole series on it. It comes through being close to the Lord. It comes from intimacy, companionship, walking with the Lord. We can't produce holiness in our life. If we could, the Old Testament covenant would have been sufficient. It's a gift of God from walking with him. And there's another layer to holiness for the person building the kingdom of God that's kind of a little bit hidden and not often talked about. And Proverbs 16, 9 talks about, in a man's heart he plans his way, but the Lord determines his step. And there's another layer to holiness here for the person building the kingdom of God and the person stepping out in faith. And that is that we don't 
force on God what we want, we allow him to guide us and let him build what he wants. And there's a, there's, that's an element of holiness where we say, Lord, I'm going to surrender, I'm going to bow down because it's always going to look a bit different to what you thought it was going to be. As you go out and as you walk, the Lord is going to build and he's going to direct your paths and let him do that. Plan your way, yes, but let him direct your paths. It's another element of, tr- of holiness and just surrender to the Lord. The next one is total trust, total reliance. We must trust him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. We must have holiness and we must trust him. And thirdly, forward faith. Exodus 14, 6, 14 13, and 15, it's when the Israelites come to the Red Sea and Moses says, um, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And it's interesting because God kind of almost rebukes Moses a little bit. And he says to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Move forward. Moses says, stand still. But God says, no, move forward. And so much in our life, so much in our world, so much in our culture is going to tell you to stand still. So much is going to tell you to hold back. So much is going to tell you to conform and to not do the thing that God's called you to do. But the Lord interrupts that. And he says, no, move forward move forward. And if you find yourself more than anything kind of halfway out on the lake, what's the best thing to do? Keep going. I remember when I was a kid, they used to tell this joke. It was an, are you allowed to do Irish jokes? And is it probably all like nowadays politically correct and you can't say any joke or whatever. But there used to be this thing when I was a kid called Irishman jokes. I don't even know what that means. I'm not trying to offend anyone, but it was just a joke. And they used to say, I feel like I'm doing some horrible politically incorrect thing here, you know, like we're going to get in trouble. But it's say the Irishman, he um, swam, there were three people that you know, were swimming on the lake and to cut the, the, the joke short, the last one was the Irishman and he swam halfway across the lake and he got tired. So he turned back to swim back, you know, like that's kind of what we do because the point is if you're halfway, you should just keep going. And if you have stepped out and you're feeling a little bit lost, the best thing you can do is rally to holiness, rally to trust, and keep going forward for the kingdom of God. Because God wants to use your life. And I just have a passion and a heart today to remind you that God has a call on your life. He wants to use you, and He is calling you through His Word today to step out and move forward. Break camp. Advance in faith for His kingdom whatever that looks like for you. You've stayed long enough at this mountain, friend. God is calling you. Whatever that looks uniquely like for you, God is calling you to move forward. Don't listen to the culture. Don't listen to people saying, oh, don't do that, do this. Listen to the voice of the Lord. Listen to the Lord's call and command on your life. So friends, the last thing I want to put up is just this slide, and it says the Lord swore. He made an oath. And I'll get Claire to come up. And Claire was mentioning, you know what, why don't you stand up with me? And we know the kids are in the service, but just to end off this moment. We're going to have a response time in a moment. Claire was mentioning, and just stay with me, Claire was mentioning, you know, talking about the stars this morning. And we just moved house, and our new house, Josie's room, my oldest daughter, is kind of at the end of the house, and in her window, you can, in the morning, at like four, five in the morning, you can see all the stars, the Orion constellation and all that. It's really a beautiful view. And at the moment, because we moved house, at about three o'clock, Josie comes into our bed. And then at about 5.30, Jasmine comes in. And we have a 104-year-old Labrador who sleeps on our bed. Like this. And so I just give up. And so pretty much every morning for the last six weeks since we moved into our house at 5.30, I get up and go to my daughter's bed to try and get some last bit of sleep. And I sleep in this pink bed with bluey sheets and toys everywhere poking me in the back. And I open the window and I see these stars come up. And just go with me just for a moment. We're not going to keep you too long. 
this is one star. It's called Arcturus. And apparently it's 37 light years away. And when I was 37 years old, I remember looking at that star and thinking the light from that star, when I was 37, it was released the, day I w- the year I was born, right? And it spent 37 years traveling from that star to this earth. And the year I was, when I was 37 years old, I stood on this planet and I looked up at that star and I saw this light that was released the year I was born. And I'm, I know this is a little bit out there, but I just want to ask you, that star Arcturus, you can look it up in the sky, just get the app and find it, it's so easy. It's releasing light right now. And in 37 years' time, that light is going to land in the Sutherland Shire. And you can look up and you can see it. And I just want to ask you, in that 37 years that that light is travelling across our corner of this galaxy, of this universe, thundering at enormous speeds towards our planet, one day it's going to land on your iris and you can see it. And I want you to use that as a bit of an out-of-the-box marker today. Try and make us think a bit different, to think about the things eternal. And in 37 years' time, add up. How old are you, Savannah? 18. So in 37 years' time, you will be someone, what, what is that? Someone help me out, man. Like, what? 55? Yeah, let's just go with that. 55. Something like that. Say you were 20 years old. That's a bit easier. You'll be 57, right? I'm sorry. I'm just having a moment. You'll be 50. You guys are like, that guy's doing a PhD. Are you kidding? You can't even add two numbers together. But if you're 20 years old, in 37 years' time, you'll be 57. If you're 43 years old like me, in 37 years' time, you'll be 80. What do you, what, if you could, if you were that age and you could go back to now and rehear this message, not from Sean, but from the Word, about stepping out, what do you reckon you would say to your younger self? You'd say, do it. Build the kingdom. Don't listen to the people saying, it's a whatever, a bit outdated. Go and do this. Don't listen to people saying, don't become, you know, this or that. Go and do it. Go and become an officer. Go and become a soldier if that's what God's calling you to do. I'm serious. Go and join that other ministry in the church and see where joining the boys and Jono on the tech team takes you. Who knows? Go and join the worship team. Go to Bible college. Go and start a business. Go and do it. And the 37-year-old in the future version of yourself will thank you that you stepped out because you dwelled at, the, at this mountain long enough, the mountain of dryness, and you stepped out to go and enter the promised land. You braked camp and you advanced. Amen. I'm going to pray. And then Claire is going to sing the song Oceans. And as she does that and the team does that, whoever's singing it, I just want you to just think about the things that have been talked about. And more than anything, just hear me. I just want you to say, Holy Spirit, what are you commanding me to do? Let's say it all together. Holy Spirit, What are you commanding me to do? All right, let's try it again. Holy Spirit, what are you commanding me to do? And one more time. Holy Spirit, what are you commanding me to do? That's the question to ask the Lord as we sing that song. Father, you are calling people today. You could be calling people to officership in the Salvation Army, to soldiership. I pray that they'd have the courage to walk across the room after this service and go and talk to maybe David and Sandra Godkin, who can help them with that. You are calling people to service in your kingdom in this church. Maybe you're calling them to help with soul food. Maybe you're calling them to help market Heathcote. Maybe you're calling them to help with the schools program that Joel was talking about. Would you give them the courage to go and have that conversation? And maybe you're calling them to build a kingdom business. 
or to do a career change for your glory or to do whatever it might be, Lord. I pray that you would give them the courage to do that today, Lord, to break camp, advance. They've dwelled at this mountain long enough, Lord, and your spirit is calling us to a life of faith, to step out, to walk on the water. Holy Spirit, show us the call that you have on our life. Show us now as we sing this song in response and give us the courage to say yes to you today, Lord. We pray this in complete faith that you will provide every step of the way for your children as they walk on the water to build your kingdom in this generation.